So it's 6.30, so we'll call the meeting to order. Um, I'm Phil Pierce, the town attorney. I'll preside until you guys elect a chair. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is just welcome everyone to the commission. So thank you for serving. Um, this is gonna be a process that it's a lot of work. Um, we're here to support you, but it's really meant to be commission driven. So uh, this goes wherever you choose for it to go. And we'll talk about the process tonight. Um, by way of background, so I served on the RTM for six years. I was moderator for two years. Um, I've lived in town for 16 years. I'm a partner at Conan Wolf in Bridgeport. And I'm currently the town attorney. Um, so I think why don't we just all go around and introduce ourselves. Sorry, I'm uh, Jerry McHenry. I've lived in town since 85. Uh, I'm a lawyer. My office is in Milford. Um, frankly, uh, I don't do anything like this. I'm actually a trial lawyer. So uh, this is a challenge to me to deal with paper. You can deal with people. Hi, Daniel Blanco. Uh, moved here with my wife, Donna, with two girls go through the Ludlow school system. We absolutely love this town. I'm a real estate developer, a fund manager in New York City. Um, as I told Bill, one of the nicest places I've ever lived in my life and to serve is an honor. Eric Treshik moved here first in 2008 and after a couple of years left for work and then came back in 17 and uh, two graduates from Ludlow High and uh, a fifth grader right now and looking forward to this. My uh, job here in the day, I um, work for a global uh, consumer packaged goods company, Judge Wall Personal Care for Shelton, it's easy to you, and have led uh, marketing teams, uh, general management uh, experiences, but also now lead transformations and a number of our global HR teams. Brian McCann, I'm a lawyer. Um, I've been in town for six years. Uh, two kids in Burr, one in Tomlinson. Um, I'm Mary Hogue, uh, moved here in 96 when my daughter was three months old. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Too, even just to the top back, when, back when we had snow. When we had snow, right? <laughs> um, so I've been uh, involved in all the PTAs. My kids were at Burr. We opened Burr. And someone um, and a bunch of other places. I'm still very involved with the, P with the PTA council I'm doing stuff in the schools. I'm um, secretary on sustainable Fairfield and chair of the forestry committee. I'm specific for I'm Jane Biagini. I spent my entire career at corporate, um, the last 15 or so years running the global, excuse me, the global whistleblowing program. Um, was responsible for 600 folks, boots on the ground in 180 countries, taking in ethics concerns and uh, spearheading the investigations. Well, uh, Chris DeWitt, I uh, moved here in 2002, right before my twins were born. My twins went through Fairfield School Systems and graduated from Ward. And this, um, this year, they'll be graduating from Stonehill College in, in Easton, Mass. So we're looking forward to that. Um, I was an elected official in town for 16 years on the Board of Finance, um, served in many committees in many, uh, many committees uh, uh, while, while on the Board of Finance. And um, it's been one year since I've been elected official. So um, this is my, you know, as, as they said in The Godfather, I tried to, you know, they drag me back and will grab me by the shirt and then drag you back. So so here I am and uh, looking forward to, to serving with all of you. Uh, Karen Truman, hi. I've, I've been in Fairfield about 12 years and I've been on the RTM nine years and including one term as moderator right after Phil was moderator. Um, I'm a lawyer. I work at Pullman and Comley with Brian actually, I, I, but I do corporate work, M&A and, and such contracts. Um, and I'm excited to do this work. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So um, uh, Jason Boxbaum is my uh, partner at Conan Wolf. He's going to be the primary attorney handling the revision process. He's currently running for state rep, so he has very limited time. And I could not coerce him to come tonight, but he will be the primary uh, person giving you guys advice as issues pop up. Um, so the next item is to nominate an elected chair. 
I'd like to move to nominate um, Mr. DeWitt to be chair. I'll second. Okay, is there any other nominations? Okay, any discussion? Um, I think Chris has been, has shown his ability to be a wonderful chair. So I think that we'd be in good hands if he were our chair. Thank you very much, very yeah. kind. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. Congratulations, Chris. Well Good done. choice, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my first, my first uh, job as chair is to elect the vice chairman. Um, and I would like to um, elect Jane. I, I always forget your last name, though. Eugenie. Eugenie for vice chairman. Um, we had a very nice conversation on the phone. And... Um, as I did with, with, with everyone here. And um, I think it would be a nice mix to have uh, an, eth an ethics professional uh, as, our, as our second in command here. So uh, my nomination would be Jane for vice chairman. I'll second. Oh. She beat you to it. Yeah, she beat you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I know the notes are all right. That's good. Right. Yeah, that's good. Great. Uh, any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Having heard none, any discussion? I think this is genius. I love this. I think Jane will be great. As, as do I. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, secretary, um, possibly we could be, might um, impose on Mr. Pierce for a minute. The, the job of secretary, we, we have a recording secretary. So not necessarily a note taking secretary, but what would the primary responsibility of secretary be? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think in the event that we did not have a recording secretary for a meeting, obviously taking minutes. Okay. Um, well, maybe unless Prue does it from watching the meeting. I have. You usually do it yeah. that way. Um, so it's really a... Um, so we might have left a computer here, by any chance? No, 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 no. That was not the end. Oh, this is my. I'm so sorry. Good to see you. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I, I can tell you on the board, I was, for a time, I was um, secretary on the board of finance. I was vice chairman as well. And um, one of the roles that I took as secretary was to follow up on actions. So if there was, um, so I guess anyone who'd like to be secretary, if um, if we leave the meeting and say, okay, Jerry's gonna bring back a report next month and our next time we meet, you know, the secretary would would keep those um, would keep those actions and then make sure that you know Jerry did what what he had, we we asked him to do. So any discuss who would so I mean, we have not discussed who would like to be secretary. Would anybody have a desire to be secretary? Or we'll just nominate somebody, or <laughs> you don't have we to. Have I was just going to say you. we absolutely don't have to. Don't have to have, have, to have, have one, or, right? You can have right. it. I mean, since we're going to have the town's providing somebody to do the recording notes, secretary, yeah, yeah, the secretary. So I'll make a motion that this commission not have a secretary. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like Prue, you're it. <laughs> <laughs> Cruz is it? I'm writing that in my note. Awesome. Do I get to tag somebody else? You know, yeah, right. I, I will. I will. I will keep track of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for the for the confidence and and the, and the kind words um, for my nomination. Uh, item number four on the agenda is the overview of. Um, um, boy, yeah, boy, I, you, you use the acronym so much, you know, um, I almost forget what it stands for, Freedom of Information Act, right? Robert's Rules and Charter Revision by the Town Attorney. Um, so, so this is going to be a, on FOIA and Robert's Rules, kind of a brief overview. I just want you to understand, some of you are new to being on a town commission. So I just want you to understand a couple of things about what that means. Um, I In the backup is a, a trading outline. Um, which is more comprehensive. And I 
uh, presented this to all the appointed official, officials earlier this year. I can circulate the video link if anyone is interested in watching it. Um, there's a, there's Q and A as part of it. Um, but essentially, um, you know, keep in mind the main thing is is that you cannot conduct business outside of a meeting. Um, so you cannot have a quorum of you cannot meet um, to discuss charter revision outside of a meeting. Um, you cannot um, have deliberative discussions over email. Um, email correspondence is fine if you are talking about agenda items or scheduling meetings, but um, you shouldn't have deliberative discussion. Um, you know, e emails that you exchange can be subject to disclosure under FOI. Um, so, you know, you may get served with a FOI request. If you do, let me know and we'll go through it and respond. Um, I have two questions. One is, since we're an even number, what's the quorum? Quorum is five. Five. Okay. And yeah. then are we getting town emails or we're going to use our own? Uh, I don't believe the town is providing emails. Okay. So okay. you can um, use your personal email and then... I mean, the way it would work is if, if you serve a request, you have to use search terms to find things. Um, for somebody like you, Mary, has been involved in it for a while. I mean, you also mm -hmm. may want to create an, an email so, just for this, yeah. but that's really a, a personal decision. Um, Phil, I have a question too. Um, will there be a, a email that the town provides for our commission generally, I'm assuming? Yes, there it? is. It's, um, I believe it's crc at fairfieldct.org. <laughs> Um, yes, and Jen actually sent us um, sent yeah. us a test version of yeah, it. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's either CRC or CRC one at Fairfield dot uh, org. CRC might have been the prior one, but I think she, 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 she might have repopulated. One. CRC one is what she's right. Okay, so it's CRC one. Thank you. And that email that's a distribution list for people that aren't familiar with how our dis distribution lists work. It'll be a single email to the entire commission. Um, so all, all, um, all business must be conducted in meetings and all meetings must be public. That means providing notice in advance. There are three types of meetings. There are regular meetings, there are special meetings and there are emergency meetings. Um, you will never have to have an emergency meeting or if you do, uh, well, you won't because Chris is your chair. So uh, <laughs> yes. um, special meetings uh, require 24 hours notice. Um, Regular meetings, you're going to set hopefully a schedule tonight of a few meetings, which will constitute regular meetings. But um, um, so just a question, because I am one of the ones who's new to the uh, the boards. So less than a quorum, and when it's not around trying to get around FOIA or, anything, or the uh, the meetings uh, meeting rules, but does that prevent two of us or three of us from having a conversation? No, that's permissible. I mean, the larger the, the larger the group is, I mean, so there are some decisions by the Freedom of Information Commission where smaller than a quorum mm -hmm. has constituted a meeting. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's a good idea for four of you to meet and talk about stuff, but um, unless it's a caucus, but caucuses don't really apply to this body. Okay. Um, and I wouldn't recommend caucusing because it's not, this is not supposed to be a partisan exercise. Right. Um, but, um, so I, I would discourage you from four of you meeting to discuss business, but um, yes, definitely two or three of you. Um, there's no issue with, there's really no issue with two people talking outside of a meeting. <clears throat> and email, emails can be solicited by FOIA if it, again, if it if it's a quorum only. No, if it, any it, emails? Any emails can be, I mean, you're public, you're public officials now as Charter Revision Commission members. So emails can be solicited um, even if they're not, you know, to a quorum of the members. The, the issue of a quorum of members is that if you communicate and it's amongst a quorum of the members, that constitutes an unnoticed meeting and that's a violation of FOIA. So that's why that's an issue. So what we're talking about is somebody could serve a subpoena. FOIA request. FOIA request. Yeah. FOIA request is just an email and saying, give it is, me. Yeah. And then, and then it's served on the town clerk or whoever it is. Or so if you get one, you could get one. I get one individually. Send it to me. And then we'll... Yeah. You know, Figure out. If I'm using my business email, all of my business emails are subject to. So I would suggest don't use your business email. Yeah. Okay. You could create create a Gmail, you know, or Jerry. I don't know. We're something. Talking to a diner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, but I mean, it suffices, no, but suffices I mean, to say that anything could be. Is already yeah. I it just it, any <laughs> email could be foyable and and almost certainly okay. will. I get it. Yeah. I mean, it's not. 
it's just so that you're aware of yeah, what yeah. the process is. It's not something to be overly concerned about. But I mean, I, I do want you to make sure you don't have deliberative discussions outside of meetings, whether it be email, phone, in person. Okay. So um, let's see. Um, meetings are public, which means the public can attend. Um, public comment is not required. Uh, you are required under the Charter Revision statutes to hold two public hearings. We'll talk about that later. The, okay. First thing you have to do before we start conducting business as a commission is hold a public hearing. Um, so that'll be something you'll discuss tonight. Um, you can take public comment at your meetings. It's really to the discretion of the chair to which public comment is taken at meetings other than the, um, the two public hearings that you're required to hold. Um, there's a section here on executive sessions that's really not going to apply to you. I can't, I don't see why there would be any need for that. If you think that you have to have an executive session, talk to me. I don't see why you would. Um, not that I plan on using text to primarily communicate, but I'm curious, is text or are texts uh, playable? Yes. Yep. Um, any any communication or document. Yep. So it's a pretty email. Um, so, um, there's a section in here on Robert's rules. So, I mean, just very generally, uh, let Chris run the meeting. You know, he's the chair, so um, he. I don't see any issues. This is a very mature professional commission. Chris is a very experienced chair, but just um, you know, defer to Chris on decisions of, of procedure and things like that. Um, you do have the right to challenge the chair on points of order, but I would just say it's a very small informal commission. Um, just listen to your chair. Um, Quorum is five members for this body. Um, so you can't you can't take vote you can't vote on items unless you have five members present. Um, and you you could you probably shouldn't meet and conduct business without five members. Although you could meet you could notice a meeting have people show up and conduct a meeting and discuss things. Could could you could. Um, so that's it in terms of the. Chart. And like I said, I'll email the link around to the presentation if you want a deeper dive onto that. Um, in terms of the process, so um, in the backup materials is a timeline for charter revision, which lays out the steps in the process. Yeah. So the statute requires that before you begin substantive work on the charter, that you hold a public hearing. Um, you can hold as many public hearings as you would like, but you're required to hold two. You have to hold one before you start your work. And you have to hold one after you've completed the draft report and before that draft report is submitted to the Board of Selectmen. And so, if, you, if you're working backwards, it's May, right? So May 13th is your the deadline imposed by the Board of Selectmen to um, submit the report to the Board of Selectmen. And that statute, that's the statute? That, that is the timeline that um, will allow it to be on the ballot for next November if the next steps in the process after it's submitted to the board of selectmen take the maximum amount of time. It just allows for that process to play out with, there's a back and forth between the commission and the board of selectmen that's set forth in the outline. And um, if we were to use a shorter timeline, um, no, I would, the commission I might run the risk of missing the, yeah, the just, election. Yeah, so that's that's why it's May. So we get, we get the so seven months. Well, intent purpose, right? Um, right? Yes. The goal, the goal would be to have uh, on the election day of November 4th, 2025, to have that on the ballot. So yeah, May to November. Seven months. <laughs> sounds like sounds like a long time, but uh, in public meetings terms, it's not. No. That the Board of Selectmen meets twice a month, and then what other bodies would have to... Uh, is Board of Selectmen the only Board body? Board the only body that has to... Right? Yeah, that's the only body that, that they would approve the report and um, then uh, set the ballot questions. So that so that, that be, was my next question. Yeah. Just so once the once we kind of sort out what we want, the, that gets up to the film group. And they review it, right? We want to understand the process. Is that right? And then and then thereafter, it gets it gets balloted. For yeah. So so. After you submit the report to the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Selectmen holds a hearing. Um, they have held at least one public hearing. And then the Board of Selectmen makes recommendations. These, are, these dates are blank because we don't know when you're submitting the report to the Board of Selectmen. We'll complete them as, they, as it gets more advanced. But 
Um, so you submit the report, then within 45 days after that, the Board of Selectmen has to hold a public hearing. And then 15 days after the public hearing, the last public hearing, the Board of Selectmen makes recommendations to this body for changes to the draft report. If there are no changes to the draft report, then the report's final. If there are recommendations to the draft report, then you make your final report um, not later than 30 days after you receive those recommendations. Um, you're not obligated, again, to accept or reject them. You have to consider them. Um, and you have to confer with the Board of Selectmen during that 30-day period prior to submission of your report. Um, you submit your report, and then the Board of Selectmen, within 15 days after submission, either approves or rejects the charter, um, the proposed charter change. And then if approved, the Board of Selectmen has to decide to submit it to the, um, to, to the, to the ballot, to get on the ballot for November. And that's the deadline of the September 16th. Okay, so this is basically our abstract. So um, the two steps in the process that you should begin, you don't have to decide it tonight, but the two steps in the, well, a couple of steps. You, once, the one step that you have to address tonight is to set a public hearing date. Uh, yeah. Which is an agenda item. Um, should give thought to what is the target to complete your draft report so that you can then work back from the May 13th date, knowing that you have to have, you have, to have at least one public hearing on that draft report. And then, so, you know, what, when would that be? And then when would you complete the draft report? So you don't have to determine those dates tonight, but just thinking in terms of your meeting schedule and how to accomplish the work, when those dates would be. A couple of uh, clarifying questions related to this. So one, Am I right in assuming that we can structure the ballot question um, in a way differently than the charter is organized? So in other words, we could structure it a way where it might make more sense or more housekeeping changes versus more potentially more controversial changes. Um, you mean separate the questions? Yeah, separate yes. The questions. So, uh, I, I, so I believe it's the board selectman that sets the ballot questions. Yeah. Um, I think this board of selectmen is um, extremely motivated to make sure the questions are separate right. so that issue, is, different issues can be addressed uh, differently. Okay, so your statement there then I guess maybe answers my second one. So I was assuming that on the May 13th, we would need to submit both a draft charter plus the ballot, no. ballot questions, but we don't actually create the ballot questions. Right? No, I would think we would <clears throat> give the board of selectmen Maybe the recommend our recommendations for questions, but they would have. But again, ultimately, it is the board of decisions just decision to. I want to have one omnibus question or yeah, structure right, you know, twenty okay. questions. Right? I think I know. Given how the last charter mm -hmm. revision played out, I would be shocked if the board of selectmen approved a single ballot question because. No, I agree. I just assumed it was our responsibility or our accountability, I guess, to actually deliver deliver the ballot question too, but apparently not. So. And, 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 well, so this is our source document. So that is, so the, the so Daniel's holding up the uh, blue lined yeah. version of the charter. This shows the recommendations from the prior charter revision commission. So the, the source, I mean, the real source document is, is the current charter, right. the 2006 charter. Right. Um, the prior commission did a lot of work. Um, they met over a nine month period or so. Um, Looked at a lot of different topics, so um, that's in your backup because yeah, got it. it's, a, it's a good it's a good starting point. Yeah. You're not bound by that. Um, you don't have to follow what that said. You can, you can follow it, but you're not bound by it. So just to confirm that question, if we were provided this document already, so it's yellow line. So that's not the document we're going to be working on, but we're going to work off of this one, double-sided paper with blue lines in it. So that, that, no. that, that, Joe, that was exactly my question. So I was looking for what the source document is. That's what I'm yeah. asking. Right, right, because you need a source doc. So right this, now, the know. blue line here, yeah. was, was the previous commission's okie dokie, the notes. Right, right, right. right. So, and then this is the bottom of it. Correct, right? and then, yeah. So the new, this is the, this is your new Bible, so to speak. No, that's, right. that's the... So that's the annotated okay, so one without any change. That's the, this one. I'm sorry. So sorry. it looks yeah. like this in your packet. Yeah, that's right. This is the current town charter. This that's the source document. Current, current town charter. Right. Right. So charter. you're recommending changes to that document. That's, document. The, that's the document. That's my my right. source document. But my assumption was so this document is 
the blue lined one, yes. but actually taking out the um, right. you know, that's, that's, yeah. so that that's the annotated one. Yeah. It, it has the changes accepted, and then there's a number Correct. of annotations. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's yeah, yeah, easier to work from the fully incorporated version, but yet use the, the blue lines. As I wonder what they did in section one. Oh, look, they removed yeah. all these words, yep. right? Um, just I find sometimes just in my in my everyday job, doing track change things a lot of times is is it gets a little confusing. But it's very good to have this delta document, right? So, yeah. Well, I'm going to suggest that I'm still confused. I have a document in front of me that says final report of the Charter Revision Commission approved by the Board of Selectmen 11 August 2022. Right. Is that the document we're working off of? And is it the same document as this document? Uh, so because now we're pushing paper. And it, I don't it know. Just, it just depends on what you mean by working on. So I, I think Chris, Chris's suggestion is that you guys rely primarily on this document, Done. which is the Report from the last Charter Revision Commission without red lines. Okay. Just to be clear, that is not the current charter, the current charter, the 2006 version. The red line shows you the changes. Right. This is the version without. You may not agree with the changes. Correct. That's, that's why, right. that's why you have to refer I back. I just want to you, you guys to understand you're not bound by anything that they did. Yeah. 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 Can I can comment on that. I, I guess I think I would, I like the idea of working off the current charter and looking at what they did as as ideas for things to change, but I want to make sure we don't view what what happened last time as like, we'll do this unless we decide otherwise. You know what I mean? I, I feel like the default should be, what is the old charter and what do we think should happen to it? And this is a, this blue line document is a great suggestion and we'll probably incorporate a lot of it. Then maybe this is too, you know, angels on ahead of a pin kind of comment, but that's just my point of view. No, I, I think the clarification was good. We know the Charter Revision Revision Commission. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You guys can just decide how you want to handle it. Yeah, so. right. The one, one thing uh, in his comments, I mean, I guess we can choose to ignore them. We have to, we have to respond. But um, the first selectman did suggest starting with the revised. That was that was his suggestion. That's one one piece of it. Annotated or revised? So I'm going to take the revised. One more shot at beating the dead horse. Why are there yellow lines in this document? Yeah, I don't know. So is this? I don't know why there are yellow. This lines. is so. You got too many. You got documents flying yeah. everywhere. We don't know what do we so got. Just just to be clear, th this document here. This is this is this. Yeah. These so are synonymous, current, right? Current Don't forget, this is just my twenty-year-old version. Current town um, charter. This right. This is the current town charter. I, when I looked at this, the only, the only answer I could come up to your answer, Jerry, and it's speculating, is this is somebody, somebody highlighted everything that they were really wanted to make sure they didn't miss in the last charter revision. I feel like I'm working with a witness at a deposition and I don't know what document the witness is talking about. <laughs> this, this document for all intent and purpose should be considered as it is without, without colors. This is the. So we can. This we is can, the. I can have Jen send a copy without don't, color. Don't we, don't we know the answer? That? Just, isn't the source document what Chris just suggested would be? Right. Um, it's the, the original, and then we look back to the blue line. I mean, yeah. Right. Whatever you guys want. Yeah. I, because if you work with the blue of, line, Chris, right? You when you work with the blue line, you're working off what other people thought. Well, you're doing that. Right. Right? You're, you're doing that with the with the, yeah, the, with the annotated part, right? Okay. I think that I kind of recall last time that it got confusing whether all the changes were actually noted in the red line. I think it was there were so many drafts. So yeah, I wonder if it's possible to get a red line, a final red line of the original charter and the charter that was voted on. Is that something? You, can, you guys can do Phil, or is, does that, that exist? That, that should be in the backup. We, we so have that. Are, those are two of the documents that, they, that everyone's talking about. So okay. We, three documents being discussed. One is the 2006 charter. One is the red line of what the commission approved. So a red line of the 2022 version against the 2006 version. Did you red line that, or was that a red line that was in the files? That was, that was a red line that they produced at the time. I kind of recall there, not everything was redlined in that, but I could be wrong. 
from my reading, I think it's a pretty good red line. Right. I think that final red line is a pretty good document. And then the third document is an annotated version of what they voted on and approved, which is their final report. So it doesn't show what has changed, but it is what they voted on and approved, and it has many annotations that discuss their opinions. Mr. Chairman, could you decide what documents vote? Well, you guys, so you guys, yes. I think, I think you guys can decide. Since we got yeah. yellow lines, blue very, lines, very, and red lines. Very, very simply, I, I think we should work off of the final this ch charter with annotated end notes. Yep. And if we're, we're just going to make this up, we're going to talk about section one tonight. And we look through section one and say, oh, I wonder what I wonder what they were thinking about in section one. Well, this would be the document that would tell you what they were thinking about in section one. And then if you just wanted to be 100% sure what was the starting document, that would be the other documents. The original unedited right. charter. Because what we're, I mean, in practicality, what we're really doing is taking the 2006 um, release document and turning it into a brand new document 2024. Whether we use every word in here or we don't use any words in here. Okay. And, and I'm just going to go one step further. Okay. The document that I came with that is the Fairfield Town Charter mm -hmm. has fuchsia lines, whatever color you want to call that. It's got yellow lines, whatever color you want to call that. I mean, does that mean that those have been taken out of the charter? No, I, I do no. So we can uh, certainly we can I can ask Jen to circulate a clean version of the I don't think I don't think she meant to send a copy of the highlights of the existing charter. So I would I would not read into those highlighted things in any way. No, I'm just trying to know where they came from. <laughs> what the document is that it, I mean I don't know if those if those highlights mean that the things have been taken out or recommended. So I'm just looking for a clean document. Yeah. We can, we I can, can I can tell you look from the no kidding, this is the this is the gospel. Um, all of the words that are on, and it, the, the pages are numbered, which is a problem, but under 9.2425, all of those words that are highlighted in fuchsia are indeed in the actual. Do they get the right color? I, I'm going to default to your, uh, to your color of choice, but uh, I, think that's, uh, I think that's as good as any. Okay. Um, the other thing that I, I will circulate is um, the first Leckman's office had an intern this summer um, do some research on uh, um, other towns that were somewhat similar, either because of structure or size. There are a few towns in Connecticut that have the Board of Selectmen RTM model or a um, town meeting or some other similar form of government um, and a few other towns that are similar in size. And so we did um, kind of a deep dive into their charters and created a, a spreadsheet pretty detailed about what different towns have oh, done. Your metrics. Handle. Yeah, well, just it's just it's just something yeah, that's better. That'd be really good. So, yeah, yeah we'll circulate that as well. Just a, a comment on that. Um, that intern is my son. And um, I did a nice job. Did a great work. I did submit for this charter before. Then I asked my son to do that in the over the over the summer role. He also has a, a final word word document PDF in addition to the spreadsheet. I think both would be useful. Yes, okay. I was to send. Kudos, good for you. That's great. Very good. Very good. Very good. He might be following the lawyer footsteps. He's a first year though, so we'll have time to change his mind. Okay, so. Um, any other questions about the process? The, the only question I have, just to, to, just to round out this dis document discussion, um, has someone, so I, I know there are things in the, the charter that are mandatory. Has someone made sure that every mandatory, I'm going to use the word thing because I don't have a better word, every mandatory thing that's got to be in here has made its way into the the final, the recommendation that was made by the last commission. Um, so you're saying whether they, they got all of the recommendations, all of the things that were mandatory and whether right. there any others. Can we, can we be assured that they didn't miss, like yeah. who the dog warden works for <laughs> is, is in here, but did, can we make a hundred percent sure that, 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 that who the dog warden yeah. works for is and actually. The next question you want to ask, were those things are omitted, were they supposed to be in there as well? Right, you'd have to look at it both ways. Uh, it, well, yeah, exactly. Right, we can we can confirm that. Yeah. That, that. That's the only that's the only stumbling block I have with it. If, I mean, if if we 
we, if we, you know, assume that this is the guiding document if you will, for us to do our review, I just don't want to get to the end and somebody say, oh, by the way, you never addressed section 8.1 that's in the old chart. So I'm assuming they did it, but probably better not to assume, right? I agree. Any other questions about the process? I mean, this is not your only time to ask. So I mean, yeah, they'll be I, right. I just want to make sure that everyone knows. Kind of what yeah, just, I wanted to jumping off. Yeah, no, I, I no, it's good. So, no, it's good um, either myself or Jason, we're happy to attend any and all meetings if that's what you want. Um, I, my role is going to be to answer, or our role would be to answer legal questions and speak to the process. This really is going to be driven by the commission and what you, where you choose to take this. So. Um, you know, from our perspective, I, I, I don't need, we don't need to beat the meetings to babysit things and handle that. But if you want us at the meetings, we are happy to be here. Um, and the first selectman is happy to attend meetings too. If you want to be at meetings, um, if you would love to attend every meeting, <laughs> I think that um, you probably should not be at every meeting because I, I would agree with that. Because um, I think you need to just kind of do what you think is right in terms of the charter. Yeah. Will each meeting have a Zoom reference call for anyone who might not be able to be here in person? Uh, I'm subject to the town scheduling it, yeah. Okay, and is every meeting recorded? That's the, that's the plan, okay. I think, so. Okay, great. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, agenda item five is the schedule discussion. So the first thing we should really talk about is the public hearing. So um, the first point that I'll throw out for discussion is um, is where. So every every year, uh, just as a point of uh, God bless you, just a point um, point of um, information. Every year, the Board of Finance has an annual. Um, Saturday meeting at, at Ludlow High School. And it's for everybody to get in front of the Board of Finance before they make their, their budgetary vote for, for, for the season. Right? Um, I'm, I'm more thinking that this public hearing should be more in a, in a venue like that, a larger venue, so as many people can show up. Um, I think having it in this room could be a limiting factor. I'd love to have a I'd love to have 200 people there given their opinion. And I think there's a potential to have a fairly large audience there give us their opinions based on the fact that the last one didn't quite go as everyone had, had expected. So um, first thing I'd like to just talk about real quick is, is where. I mean, and I'll just throw it out for discussion purposes. Um, I, I'd, I'd recommend maybe let low, let low auditorium. We can talk about a day and whatever, you know, but. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Makes sense to me. What we about do. Um, so we're Zoom and all that that's set up for? Because um, I know. Board I think the board answer board. to that is no, but I get well. So that that's your fair point, right? So um, the conservation commission used to meet at the fire training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They still that has all the equipment all set up. That, that accommodates. It accommodates. Yeah, like well, you see, like a hundred, maybe. You know. I don't know. What was the question, Troy? How many, it's not as big as an auditorium. How much does it accommodate? Because you don't want it limiting, right? I'd say 100, probably 100. Is that right? Surprised if the Ludlow Auditorium didn't accommodate a Zoom. You're not going to get more than an actually. Well, it's already pre-set up. Yeah, like it's a good point. It's a, it's a good the, point. Um, right? it's, it's, yeah. it's a good point. Yeah. Well, well, then let me ask a qualifying question. Do we want to consider questions over Zoom at that meeting? So, so the board just it's not a question answer. Oh, it's okay. a public hearing where you receive public comment. Yeah, You're not a fair point. Obligated to, I mean, you could get into a back and forth. I think it's really a chance for the public to tell you what they think about right. it. Yeah, and I can mediate that. That's that's not a problem. I've done that before. So, so you think it's important that we provide as many options as possible for people to contribute? And so yes, Zoom, phone whatever the right way yeah, to do it is. On the complete fun. full transparency, as many people. You have I don't think it's necessarily a problem if it's phone right. as opposed to Zoom, but there has to be a way for people who aren't physically there to communicate. Okay. So, um, I mean, 
I'm fine with the with the police. Uh, uh, sorry, the fire training station. I don't know what the availability is. Should I call Jen tomorrow? Can she arrange that? Uh, yes, she can. So um, she had suggested three dates, but it was not. Um, she, she had not checked on location availability. So the three dates she had checked on, or I think this is just because of the um, schedule of other meetings. The and calendar. Yeah. yeah. So October thirtieth, um, but that may be a little too soon if the right public wants to. Yeah, that's, that, that feels too soon. Um, November fourth and November seventh were the three dates she suggested based on. But th that's not limiting in any way. I mean, it's yeah. you know. There are other dates. Notice. I was going to say, how, how, how are we? Well, so <laughs> one of the things that absolutely drives me crazy about the charter right, is, is when we say things like we have to publish the proposed charter in at least one, once in a newspaper having general circulation in the town. Mm -hmm. would, you, would anyone like to take a guess what that is? Because I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think you you just notice it like a meeting. So it, I mean, I think we should give as much notice as possible. Right. Um, then there's not like a two week. No. There's no requirement. No I think I think I think it's twenty four hours actually. Okay. So there's no statutory it's, requirement. It's a twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. That's it. Yeah, but you want to give yeah. far more than that. Yeah. Right. And, and why were those dates? Does anybody know why those those I dates think were selected? That she selected those. I don't even know what those are. So just other meetings, based on other meetings, it's a Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. The fourth is a Monday, and the seventh is a Thursday. It could just be based on when other meetings are scheduled. Um, but yeah. th that that's not if, if the dates don't work for the commission. We agree that the thirtieth is too soon. Too, yeah. wait, I think I the thirtieth is a little too soon. Yeah, I would agree, but. Um, how many public hearings do we have to hold? So you have to hold one before you start your work, and then you have to hold one before your draft report is submitted okay. to the board of selectmen. You can hold as many as you'd like, but you have to hold at least those two. Okay. So why don't we look at the week of November fourth here, just real quick? I, I I can tell you November fourth is not good for me. Um, November fifth is election day, so I say we would count that out, right? I would say no. Seventh. Seventh. Are we thinking about an evening meeting, obviously? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, um, no. Um, I'd have to respectfully decline that. That is um, that is the annual Ludlow um, Veterans Day concert, which I'm putting, everybody should go to. It's absolutely amazing. Ludlow Band. Absolutely, absolutely so it takes amazing. Ludlow anyway. takes <laughs> Ludlow out anyway, right. Um, there, the sixth, I don't know if that would work for people. But there, I just would know that there is that's, a board of select meeting that, that evening. That's tough for me on the sixth. At four, but I don't, I mean, I don't think there'd be a conflict. I don't think there's a conflict, right? I mean, unless I'm know, thinking this meeting is like seven o'clock at night. Yeah. And the board of select meeting would probably be done. They by that. should be done by seven. So you said that November sixth is not that's tough for me. Okay. How about November twelfth? Okay. Uh -huh. How about November thirteenth? I can do that. I can do the thirteenth. Well, November eleventh is Veterans Day. Please. Both doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Mr. Blanco's birthday, so oh, that's, that's neither here nor there. That's very important. No. We're not bringing you cake or anything, so. Uh, <laughs> 12th or 13th? How about the 14th? How about the 14th? How's that? Okay with me. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 14th is enough. No. Is that right? Is it? It doesn't work for Mary. So can we thirteenth doesn't work for someone? Thirteenth is out. I'm in the city that day. That's the yeah, me too. And we couldn't get up by here by seven. No. So twelve well, so twelfth. Do you wanna you wanna take twelfth off? I'll leave that to you. Let's see what the next options are. We're gonna be Thanksgiving. Eighteenth. I think you guys should try to hold the public hearing before. Yeah, because yeah. You, can't, you, can't, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. Yeah. As far as not being able to attend, it's not really that big deal. It's for the public to just a, yeah. put their concerns. I have a record of it. November 4th. Yeah. Do it sooner. 
No, November, uh, November Chris 4th. Can't, Chris Chris can't. I think I think Chris is the chair. He should be. Yeah. He should be there. But um, yeah. I, I agree that the entire commission. I mean, you, if, if one person feels like as long as, as long as the town is like twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth is kind of the so what's fourteenth the sixth. The sixth is fine by me. Okay. Like yeah, I can make at least sixth. 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 Uh, so the sixth, I can make it work. Okay. Number sixth, it is. And um, I'll call Jen about getting the fire training. Um, I, I do know that the Conservation Commission has a meeting that night at the fire training center. Yeah. We would have to use a different venue. But I think if the six works for everybody, you guys should go with that date. Stick with the six. Yeah. Find a place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where else could we go? Well, I was going to say, um, depending on like how heavy that meeting is, and there are two rooms that you know like sometimes there's planning and zoning in the big room we could use the other room but the other room is kind of small though the other room is yeah. small no i mean, I mean for, the, com the for conservation. conservation oh i see oh yeah right how many people that's a good point sorry is that a possibility it's. I mean, it depends on what's on their agenda. But so listen, let, let's let's home in on November sixth. I think you guys should go with that date since that seems to work. I will. Um, I'll call Jen to get a um, pick a date for the home. Yeah, exactly. It's an evening meeting, right? Yes, yeah, so seven o'clock. I think it's. Right yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's seven. How long do they last typically? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like I always said every year with the with the Board of Finance meeting. I hope it lasts two hours because that means a lot of people are interested and probably want to talk. I've been meeting there 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 for ten minutes with comments, or um or or, or two hours. So I mean, okay. I'd say bank on two hours. I think that'd probably be more more than enough, right? So I'm assuming. So uh, I'm assuming the form for that meeting would be um just generic comments for me. And then open up to the floor. Yeah, I think so. Okay. When we give speakers time limits. So yeah. My, so going for a form out moderator, I think you, you wait and see how many people want to speak and then yeah. impose time limits as you think are reasonable. So kind of the norm is like three minutes if a lot of people want to speak so that there's some limit. Um, somebody has to keep time. But yeah. um, if you only have five people that want to speak, I mean, yeah. yeah, I've uh, I've, I've um, moderated more than a couple of town halls for the Board of Ed, and, and literally there there has been some that were two hundred people. So you know I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at gauging, but uh, initially they give you three minutes, and if you're if someone is really coming up with some good stuff, you know I'm willing to let them go a little bit longer. But but again, it is just a comment. It's not, hey, I'm curious what you think about this. No, you know, I want to see. The dog warden report directly to the first selectman. That that's that's the kind of stuff we're we're, we're looking for, right? Okay. I think you have it in for the dog warden. Yeah. I, I just sorry. I don't mean no no offense to the dog warden. Um. Okay. Great. Uh, second item: discuss and approve an initial schedule of meeting. So these would be after your public hearing, because that's when you can begin to meet and um, that business. I think it probably makes sense to have some dates on the calendar so that you can you have them planned and person commissioned. So since we couldn't keep a call with the first date. <laughs> <laughs> some dates for you this will be a little bit easier because now will this room be available for us? Um, it depends on the evening, but um, yeah. I mean, I think most evenings this is available, yeah. but it depends on the evening. I think it's important to have it, a room at least this size, just in case the public does want to come. I mean, um, the, well, the last is it's hard to judge against the last commission because that was kind of during COVID, right? Webex, yeah. Yeah, it was all over WebEx. It was kind of over COVID. So I don't think a lot of people had the opportunity to, or, or yeah, we, we they didn't, uh, they didn't meet in person. So, um, okay. Um, my tax, here's, here's what I'm thinking, was, was twice a month. Now, um, twice a month for, I don't know, you know, I don't want these meetings to be four hours either. And, and um, I, guess, I guess my qualifying question is, you know, how, um, 
who who would be the best? Will, will Mr. Buxbaum recommend? <laughs> I think you should look at section this, or uh, is this up to us to decide how we'd like to review the document? It's really up to you. I mean, if you it, that that where you start is really up to your judgment. Um, so, okay. So I would think the first meeting we have after the public section. I'd ask everyone to take a look at the document and then maybe suggest how we can parse this out. Um, I know I keep saying section one, section two. I, I personally think that would be an absolutely horrible way to, to do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so this is an example, right? Yeah. So um, maybe the first meeting we could spend the first, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes discussing how we'd like to go forward and then, and then proceed from there. Well, maybe one um, a request and then a, a comment. Maybe do it in reverse. The comment is: um, the first Lechman gave us a little bit of a roadmap as far as things that he would like to see us discuss. And if, if we could also get that same document from the other two select persons, then I think the combined uh, three documents would give us a general idea of some of the key issues to really think about. We're going to have to respond to those regardless. I mean, that's required according to our work. And that could be a good way to think about how to organize. Right. Your so, work. so you're only required to respond if the board of selectmen votes on recommendations. It is possible they may vote on additional recommendations, um, but you have what you have before you and you're not bound to only look at those things. Right. No, I, I agree. I agree that. Um, I, th I thought... You mentioned that we were required to not, not to accept his suggestions, but at least to acknowledge them and say, yeah, we, we looked at it and we said no. Because in, in, of in the draft report, you have to respond to the recommendation. So you have to have reviewed it and have a, a position on. And that's it. only what the first selectman has provided or any select person. Has so provided. it's the it's the recommendations are from the board of selectmen. So that those suggestions from the first selectman were adopted by the board of selectmen as were the suggestions from the town clerk yeah so you have two sets of recommendations that have been adopted by the board of selectmen that this commission has to include in the report one way or the other you can say we considered this we didn't accept it to consider it um the board of selectmen could make additional recommendations that may or may not happen right it's possible um, but you know, again, they're not, you're not limited in any way but with the recommendations. Uh, I was also going to bring up tonight. I think this is a good time to talk about it. I would like, and in, in, in this time period between today and uh, our first meeting, our um, town meeting and all, I would like to also, I guess, more informally ask um, the chairperson of the board of finance and the chairperson of the board of ed for their recommendations. It could be, Casual recommendations. I spoke to um, I spoke to um, Ms. Charlton, who's the chairperson of the Board of Finance today. I said, "Would you be willing to do that for me?" And she said, "Yes." Um, one of the real points that was a little contentious for me in the last one was that um, I wasn't asked about like budget hearings, and I was the budget committee chairman. So uh, I really want to give both those both those um, chairpersons opportunity at least give us their their input we wouldn't have to respond to them but i think it's worth getting input. and we've got a little time i mean we're, we got a little time before november 6th and we would require i would require them to have them in place before we meet on our first meeting would it be worth casting a wider net and asking the chair of all boards and commissions for input well that's all the boards um, you've got Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance. I mean, uh, commissions would be a commissions would be a one, I think. Do we want the inputs of the Golf Commission and the Sewer Commission and the? They are the experts within their little domains. Maybe there's some kernel of something that none of us would be aware of. Like Jane, particularly if we're thinking about making changes to their uh, exactly, well, I agree with you. Or said a different way, you offer it, you cast a wide net, they don't bite, they don't bite. Mm -hmm. You casted it. I like that okay. idea. Okay. We should at least WPCA <laughs> at the very least, right? Yeah, okay, I like it. Um, 
I mean, the suggestion in uh, the first Lechman's letter about solid waste as an example, that, that came from solid waste because they're kind of a weird commission. They have a lot of independent authority, but they're not a charter commission. They're created by ordinance. It's a little odd. Yeah. Um, just as an example. Well, look, if you throw the wide net out, at least you did that. If they respond, they respond. If they don't, they don't. Good idea. I think there's some goodwill in that. I think that's right. I think it's a good yeah, yeah. I think that's okay. right. I like it. Okay. I might um, ask because there's the town charter and then there's the town code. And they don't support each other. They contradict each other sometimes. And um, what is the difference? And, you know, that, that just, I, we're not, we're only the charter revision commission, but if we don't align with the town code, then what happens? Well, the town charter takes precedence over the, the ordinances. I mean, so the thing about it, the, the charter is like our constitution and the ordinances are like our laws. So, um, sometimes the laws fill in the gap. Sometimes they're, they are inconsistent. Um, the, you know, the section on real property that we have is, I think, very inconsistent in the town code versus the charter. There's a number of them. Um, is the town code? I think, I think I would not. Yeah, the ordinances. It's an ordinance. It's all ordinances. The code oh. It's the code ordinance. of ordinances. I wouldn't, oh. I wouldn't let the, I mean, the, the ordinances can be changed. So to the extent that they're inconsistent and have been superseded by chart changes that this commission makes, I wouldn't let that guide. Your... Can we get that in the definitions? Because the town code is not in the definitions. And I think that that would be helpful for people. It's up to you guys. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're on the commission now. Because <laughs> I've been asked so that. That is many... definition in the town charter of what town code is? What is, a ta what is the town code? Because people ask that all the time. And I'm like, I, I have to tell you it's a funny story. Mary, Mary and I spoke on the phone and she asked me that very question. And I said, there's the town code. <laughs> 16 years as an elected official. I called I called another elected official who had been on serving similar time to me. And he said, I don't know, what's the town? There's no town code. I'm like, really? So and then I looked it up on the internet. I'm like, wow, there is a town code. I know. <laughs> it's the I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I knew that feud was coming back. I got to tie it, tie it back for you. Thank you. Well, back on the um, the area of getting input, um, and I, I kind of went at this a little bit earlier, but um, in particular in getting uh, select person cup chicks input would be helpful. I recognize that we're, we're trying to think about this from a nonpartisan perspective, but there will be partisan perspectives coming in. Mm -hmm. and I think it'd be great if we could start with the... Um, I'm going to call it the senior party of the from uh, the first select panel. So a uh, select person cup check, I think would be helpful to have both perspectives to start. Uh, because I'd hate to be derailed late in the game where there's a real interest in pursuing another area we haven't thought about or potentially just a very different idea. Not just saying we'll follow either of them, but yeah. I'd really like to know what their well, opinions great. are. So do do we believe, just to qualify, do we believe um, select woman Cupchick's comments have been included in this document we received? You mean the prior commission? No, the 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 document called First Selectman's recommendation no. to the Charter Revision. No, I, I, Christine. No, I don't. That 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 is that's a letter from Bill. It was voted on by the Board of Selectmen. Um, I believe in the meeting, um, the Board of Selectmen meeting where this was discussed. I think she indicated that she did have other things that she wanted to oh. comment on, but she wasn't ready to do it at that meeting. That's what she said. Well, yeah. so right. Exactly. And Christine mentioned around... Well, yeah, I know Christine Vitali did did so say, yeah. I mean, you're free to solicit recommendations from anyone. Yeah. Well, I just think those two sets of recommendations would be really helpful yep. to, to start, I mean, given their role on the board. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Just, just to be 100% clear, the only thing we have to formally respond to is this Bill's, Bill's letter and right. Betsy's letter, and Betsy's letter, which is what I'm, which is what I'm holding on to. Yeah. However, how would you possibly know that? But <laughs> let's say Christine makes recommendations and the board votes on them, then we'd have to respond to them, right? Yeah. So it's only if the board of selectmen votes on it. Yeah. Okay. There are no. There, I mean, there's a board selectmen meeting this week. There's no. There are no new items on that agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I've strayed off topic a little bit, but I think that was worth it. Um, so twice a month feel okay. So 
um, we're meeting on November 6th, so we'll call it one of the meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I'd recommend the 18th or 19th before Thanksgiving. The 18th is an RTM committee meeting, so. Oh, thank you for that, okay. Are the RTM committee meetings always on Monday? Yep. Okay, so let's just avoid Mondays because Mondays are really, frankly, not good for me. And, and with the RTM, that, that's a really good point. Nineteenth. Okay. Um, yeah, good, good idea. I can probably do Zoom that day, Chris. I mean, can we potentially look at something like I'm going to make it up like Tuesdays every two weeks type of thing? Because Absolutely. I think we're going to be working ourselves in circles if we yeah, try to schedule each meeting individually. No, 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 I'm with you. I, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking that we probably are going to be handpicking them right initially around Thanksgiving okay. and Christmas yeah, and then right. okay. January, I think we'll be more, we can get more on a yeah. regular tax, right? So I would say um, the ninth, <laughs> and I'll, I'll summarize this and um, we'll, Prue, will you, will you, how, how are we handling minutes? Will minutes have to be approved and yeah, like standard, okay. Same as any. Other. Okay. okay. Um, I can send a separate note. I can. Am I okay? I'm. I'm okay. Emailing everyone with information about agenda. So sharing information is fine. Um, just where you, a deliberative discussion is like you share information and then you start having a discussion about like the merits right. of different charter provisions. That's right. where it crosses the line. But you can share information over email that's, with each other. Yeah, that's just setting up times. Set or, or and you can also schedule meetings. You can discuss what goes on the agenda, but Got you it. can't get into <laughs> discussing the merits of different things or you know the substance of the charter. Really, Got it. Do that. Right. And, okay, so so nineteenth. How about December third and then December seventeenth? Those are all Tuesdays. I don't know yeah, a bunch, of them, a bunch of them will be Zoom for me, Chris. That's all. Okay. I can't do the third. All three are fine. All three are fine for me. Work for me. Okay. And then we'll work after that. Move forward. So 11, 19, right, Chris? 12, 3, and then 12, 17. Okay. What time? All right. We've got November 6th, right? Yeah. Public That's the public hearing. Yeah. November 19th, December 3rd, and December 17th. December 17th. Yeah. Oh, um, the request for solicitation of data from the commissioner, uh, the head of any committee or the board's I'll solicit that to Jen. Yes. I plan to do that like right away, give everyone as much oh, yeah. time to, but that's a good recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you can also tell them that the public hearing is that night as well. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is get make sure we can lock down the six, make sure everything's cool with that. We have a room, and then I'll ask for the, for the, for the data. So another question related to, and we briefly discussed this on our, our call, Chris, but um, related to gathering more information, are we are we actively discouraging like individual conversations with acquaintances or others in the community? Or, encouraging. Or do we want own that to be only formally kind of brought to this committee? Encourage. Encourage. <laughs> There's no, no issue from my perspective. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like there's eight conduits that bring are supposed to be bringing information from everyone else. I mean, um, I think after the after the um, after the um, November sixth meeting, we'll we'll have a laundry list of things that the the public would like to see if, if they haven't already, you know, said it, and then we'll have all the inputs from all the chairmen's and the committee members and stuff like that, and then I think we can probably take that list and put them into three or four different piles, right? And, and give them some timelines, they respond. Right. And they respond or not. Exactly. Yeah, they definitely have to have a timeline, right? Yeah, you have to give them a timeline to respond. Right. And I'm wondering if there, is there a form we use? Do we just, there's no outline, right? At that point, we're gonna have to, they're gonna look at their particular section and they're gonna make recommendations relative to that engagement. Yeah, I'll just, I, I would just put a couple introductory yeah. sentences on a Word document and say, what do you think? And not to get, not, I'm sorry, not to get into the weeds, does that have to be officiated as well when you make that formal request to the other 
department, so to speak, yeah, you know, in stakeholders? It's just informal. Okay. A lot of attorneys here. <laughs> right. Okay, so gotta be careful. Sure. That's no. a question. Well, that's it. Um, I think that would be our last, we only have one more um, agenda item, but I usually would have something here we talk about just open discussion. Uh, I don't have anything else for this evening. Would anyone else like to bring up any other topics? You mentioned earlier, just on the timeline, do we want to have a, a kind of a line, of sand, line in the sand as far as when we want to have the draft done so we can be thinking about the second required public meeting? So I'm guessing we don't want the public meeting on May 12th, let's say, if uh, before 2 on the 13th type of thing. Yeah. And are we trying to get it done in April and have the public meeting in April? I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but I think that could be helpful. So we all kind of have an idea of what we're actually yeah. expected to do. I mean, I'm beginning to think that the, our first meeting after the, um, mm -hmm. the public meeting should be more, not, not organ, this is an organizational meeting, but maybe maybe a guideline meeting, right? Okay. And that, and we could certainly include that because we, I think we have to do that sooner than later, right? We don't want to get into January and say, oh shoot, I think we're not gonna be done until June. <laughs> that would not be good, right? So, but I think the next, after the public meeting, I would like to, we talk about the timeline and then how to approach the recommendation on how we approach the document as a, um, um, just from a, how do we, you know, the old, what's the old adage? How to eat an elephant one, one, one bite at a time, right? You know, something like that. How how we uh, how we park it sounds good. Okay. Well, any public comment, sir? Uh, my name is Matthew Halleck. I live in Fairfield. Um, just I had some thoughts on things that I read the charter and some things that I ideas or contributions. So you said you'll encourage it. So I guess just email it. Right? That's the best way. Yes, please. CRC1 at, <clears throat> at fairfieldct.org. CRC1. The Charter Revision Committee? Yes. One. Yeah. I think it's on the site too. Yeah, Fairfield, Connecticut. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. So everybody gets yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. All right. Um, well, thank you for reading the charter. You're probably in the 0.01% of the <laughs> yeah. Fairfielders who have. So good on you. I read the POCD too. And. Um, did you read the town code? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did, yeah. When wow, I to, see? When I, when I I used to own a building on Tunstall Road, and I had to do all this revisions and use change. And so, yeah, I, I knew the code pretty well. Um, a preface or like a preamble. I remember when this was being done like a couple of years ago. I offered, I think they were talking about it because I'm a writer. If you want, just you don't have to use it. I could put it on Google Docs, whatever. But I could write something I think you know, maybe that sets the tone for who we think Fairfield is and what it's all about and just as a, whatever. I'm offering that. If you want, I can write like a little preface or preamble. I don't have any pride of authorship or anything like that. Or just maybe it'll help. Okay. okay. I'll take, if you, if you wouldn't mind sending Email. you something. Yeah, I'll <laughs> read it. And um, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm being told it's CRC, at, not CRC1. Um, CRC. Oh, CRC. Saying, it is just CRC, yeah. Okay. There was something. Charter Revision Commission at Fairfield, whatever. That's not. Yeah, I saw oh, it. So sorry. Okay. Six Somerville Street. S O M E R B I L L A. Six. Fairfield. Yeah, you did bring up a good point. So, um, in the last two years of the Board of Finance, during the budget process, we used Google Docs. Can we confirm that? She sent the test email to CRC1. I, I'm just, I just she saw said it's CRC1. Right? She yeah. said it's CRC1. So She's which right. one is it? Yeah, it's one or the other. That's a legal opinion. That's a legal opinion, exactly. Well, that's an attorney well, answer. That's what I'm saying. It says CRC. CRC. Well, CRC without well, look, one. Yeah. You get a lot of spam, and it comes. I get, I'm one she of the ones who's on it, and I get some of that email. So. Yeah, she did send it to one. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be the one. I think it's the one. <laughs> it's tested. Should we vote on that? <laughs> yeah. Do a 24. Just, you know, make it interesting. Exactly. Um, Matthew brought up a good point. Uh, Google Docs, uh, last two years in the Board of Finance, during the budget process, we used Google Docs to communicate and drop little pieces of documentation in there. 
Anyone against that or for that? For. For. Yes. We use it in the office. Yeah. I'm going to ask Lori how she said that. That's okay. It's um, as long as it's. Uh, okay. Karen, do we make you late for your. Oh, no. You're going to be no. right on time for your meeting, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Yes, how are you? Fine, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. I know about five or six of you. Um, my name is Judy Ewing. I've started doing the political stuff in 1971, so I've been around a while. I've served on two charter revision commissions. I've been to every charter commission meeting that there ever was. I was at most of them last time. So I will be speaking at a meeting on November 6th. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, and I, I read both documents. <laughs> wow. And I think one of the things that I was mentioning to her is one of the confusing things that's going to be for you is that the charter, the new charter, proposed charter was reorganized mm -hmm. so that you're going to have to seek and find mm -hmm. back yeah. and forth. Right. That's going to be tough for you because after, 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 after sitting through all the meetings, I can find it on. But right. I would say Look, look at both of them between now and the next meeting. So you'll yeah. the idea because it was reorganized. Which was the reason I asked attorney, um, a town attorney appears if we had done the check, you know, yep. make sure that the, it, we've addressed in, in the old charter, the new charter because it, it is wildly different look at the organization. I think it's organized much better. I, I agree. But it, would, it might be hard to do a comparison to Back and forth. I, yeah, I agree I with. They look at the look at the content table of contents of both of them and try to figure out, make some notes to yourself. So you know. Appreciate that. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. On the sixth, that will be recorded with minutes and all that. Prue, will you be there on the sixth? Um, so I will be in the building. <laughs> oh, good answer. <laughs> oh, you're going to be at the other. We will, we will have. Uh, Minutes will be done. Thank you. I just want to make it. I did, there, be a lot of have the benefit of Prue taking notes in the right. meeting live. But I will. I, I can sprint back down the hall. Yeah. Down the hall. <laughs> well, you, because for those meetings, we usually have a sign-in sheet, you know, and then um, it's kind of ad hoc. I know a lot of times I would take notes on it too, so we can, we can figure that out. Yeah. So just to go back, we're going to make sure that the, what was required is still in there. Yes. And what was omitted, we can see. Right. right. I mean, well, that's an what's omitted that you can. Yeah, no, I think I think the initial question was right. That Chris said it was a good point that anything that was supposed to be in there. Right. Right. There, there You're about mandatory changes. Mandatory. Man mandatory. They're mandatory they're what required by law? Right. Yeah. What are the must haves? Word, I'll do word. this. I'll say it this way. What are the must haves? Make sure the must haves are in there. Right. And the want to haves, where do they show up? The want to haves are really up to you, your judgment. No, no, I wanted to see what the other people thought what the want to have want to have was. Right, we have that, right? That'll be in the blue. Okay, blue we have yeah, those. And then and then we can see what was omitted as well in the yeah, so that, section. So that that's a really good point. The so for example, there, there's a section here called resign me from elected office. If 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 the former commission decided, oh, we don't need to put that in there anymore, is that in the document with a big red? X through it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the red the line. blue line. Yeah. So that, or so right, that's, yeah, so yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. So especially, especially the omissions have to be in there as well. Yeah, I, right. I completely agree. Right. Because then we don't know. We don't have a reference point then at that point. Right. right. Mm -hmm. the, there is a reference point. Many of them. A little too bad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No so other public comment. Are you all set. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Um, motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.